Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Ice Nine Kills, The Silver Scream 2, Welcome to Horrorwood, out October 15th on Fearless Records. This album has 14 tracks, 47 minutes in length, and this is the band's six full length studio album. They are an American slash core band. Now this record is a theme, is a concept album, it's a little bit of a hybrid of those two. It continues what started with The Silver Scream. So nothing new for the fans, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into even before you press play. Now the structure of this record is really important and I think it's one of the highlights of the album. They were able to create a record that has an intro that sets the mood, it sets the concept in play for the listener in terms of what the overall record is all about and then it allows you to stay connected with every single song from that point forward because you're gonna get 13 songs, all 13 of them about 13 individual horror movies so there's a little bit of a disconnect in terms of the backdrop of the song and there's definitely a little bit of a disconnect in terms of what's happening within the song itself. But the way they continue, the way they merge from one to the other allows the record to really feel as one. It allows the record to feel balanced, to feel cohesive, and to feel linear across all 14 songs. So this is an album that you press play, you get lost in it, and next thing you know, the album is over. It has incredible playability, and has incredible fluidity. The way these songs merge with one another while still keeping their own individuality at play is outstanding. So you can listen to this album on an individual basis by playing one song here, one song there on shuffle, creating a playlist, whatever it is that you wanna do. I still feel like you're gonna get the essence of the songs individually. What they have to offer is still gonna be there. It's gonna be intact. But if you decide to approach this album from beginning to end, it, you almost lose track of where you are within the record because the songs musically are so well connected that all feels just like a straight line across all 14 tracks. Beautifully done. Once you get into the soundscape, the album continues exactly where the silver screen ended. It has the same musical attributes. You're gonna get the same style, the same soundscape. You're gonna get the same sound effects that come with each and every single song that allow you to, to feel the song a little bit deeper, to understand the root cause of that track, what inspired that track, what movie pushed that song into the forefront. All of that is still gonna be present on this record across every single track. All of that is there. So what they did before continues onto this record. I felt that they changed one thing and one thing only. They added a lot more heaviness on this album. Not to say that every single song is heavy with heavy breakdowns from beginning all the way to the end, but overall, when you reach the end of the record and you look back, there is a sense that this is a heavier album, that it has more volume, that it has more intensity, that it has more aggression all around. There's still melody, there's still ups and downs, there's still ebbs and flows within the individual songs, within the overall construction of the album, but overall this is definitely a heavier record. Within that sound there are two elements that really drive the experience and that is the drums and the guitars. I love the overall drum sound on this album. It feels very rich, it feels very warm, and a lot of the heaviness that you're gonna get really comes from what the drums are doing and how they're setting up the song itself. They really created the foundation of this album, they really created a strong bass line that allows the guitars to then come on top and be a little bit more diverse, be a little bit more driven, a little bit more technical at times, a little bit groovier here, moving in different directions, going exactly where the mood, where the back story of the track is, the guitars are kind of taking you there and letting you feel the song a little bit deeper. The drums feel a little bit more consistent, they feel a little bit more together, a little bit more balanced, the guitars are a little bit more diverse, they're going where the story is taking them, or the story is going where the guitars are taking them. So that is the duality of functions that these two elements have throughout the record, but they're very well intertwined, so there's, there's a sense of combination of, of values between them that really makes the overall sound feel big, heavy, and powerful throughout the whole album, even when some songs are a little bit more more melodic and they drop that heaviness ever so slightly. On top of it all, you have incredible vocals by Spencer. Outstanding, his vocals are just phenomenal on this album. There's some guest vocalists like Jacoby Chaddix of Papa Roach and Corpse Grinder of Cannibal Corpse. But to be honest with you, these uh, these uh, guest singers add some flair, they add some nuances to the track, they definitely bring something to the table but Spencer is the bread and butter of this record. He's the bread and butter of Ice Nine Kills, and his range is really what dictates where this album is gonna go as far as vocal prowess is concerned. So I love his voice, and I love what he did on this record. He really carries the album. He's really a storyteller at heart, and you can see that from song to song, and how he changes, and how he morphs, and he becomes that narrator, almost, of the story that he's putting forward with his music. Overall, they normally say that the sequels are not as good as the original. I think this album is far better 
this is perhaps their best record to date. I would go and argue that point because I feel like it's the more complete album that they've released. And when you look at the sound, when you look at the vocals, having some guest vocalists don't hurt. Uh, when you look at the lyrical content, when you look at the concept, the structure of this album feels way more connected than the previous record did. The previous record felt more like a combination of tracks. This one feels more like a full length record. So when you put all of that together, I have to say that this sequel far surpasses the original. And that is a great thing for Ice Nine Kills and there's a great thing for Ice Nine Kills fans. So I absolutely love this record. One of the best albums I heard so far this year. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start uh, start off with Funeral Derangements, a song based on Pet Cemetery. At least that's what I took from it when I listened to this song and I try to pay attention to the lyrics. Because that's another great thing about this album is you listen to it for the first time and if you don't know what the songs are referring to, you try to discover what movie influenced the track. So having the album early for release with not a lot of out being out there in terms of letting me know what the songs are about, that was one of the caveats that I really enjoy was diving deep and trying to discover what these songs were all about. This one to me felt like Pet Cemetery listening to it from the sound effects from everything that this song had to offer from the lyrics uh it's it's a heavy track it has a melodic chorus uh, the verses are very pounding that's where the heaviness lies it's really in the verses musically and vocally it's just strong then when you get to the chorus the chorus feels a little bit hookier it feels a little bit more catchy it has a melodic undertone there's still some heaviness there but that melodic undertone really spreads out and pushes the heaviness over the top. So it's a song that has ebbs and flows between verses and chorus. It has a, a, a phenomenal breakdown that really feels heavy, that adds to the overall heaviness of the track, that really changes the dynamics of the song, and then overall allows this track to be one of the heaviest songs on the record. Next we have Ex Mortis, a track based off of Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. Uh, I, I love this track because it sounds so different than everything else that came up until this point. It has a cabaret swing style sound to it. It still has heaviness, it still has great melody, but that undertone of cabaret swing is definitely present there. It adds a different vibe, it makes it for a fun atmosphere style track, and you see that musically and vocally as well. It matches the light-hearted nature of the movie Army of Darkness, which is a horror movie, but there's some comedy into it. I mean, you could argue there's comedy uh, also involved in the first two Evil Dead movies. So it's a it's a song that really represents that light-heartedness of that backdrop, and I really like that. I really Really like the swing vibe the cabaret vibe that this track has really sets this track apart one of the best sing-along songs in the metal world of this year i don't think there's going to be another song out there in the metal world that's going to have this sing-along power that this track has last but not least farewell to flesh based on Candyman, a very somber opening to this track. The track then explodes. The guitar playing on this song is outstanding. Definitely one of the highlights of the track is how the guitars sound, how they come across, how predominant they become, and the overall soundscape of this specific song. There's a lot of heaviness on this track, specifically in the verses. The chorus is perhaps a little bit more hooky, but still very heavy, but hooky, because the vocals in the chorus change your perception of that portion of the song, and that's where the hookiness comes from. It's not from the melody of the track, is not from the sound that the track has, but rather how the vocals are coming across and how those vocals are coming at you. So a perfect track, very complete track, perfect way to end this record. This is it, Ice Nine Kills, The Silver Scream 2. Welcome to Horrorwood. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.